Hello, everybody. Eric Worre here. Welcome to another of our top leader interviews. This is a place where we take people who are true network marketing professionals and we find out about their story. We find out about what makes them tick, how they think. And today I've got a dear friend and a guy who's just really crushing around the world. His name is Iban Tapia. Yvonne, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are Good you doing, Good to see Eric? you. Good to see you. Thank you for coming to our studios. And um, you know, I know your, I know some of your story, but I'd like to hear it again because I, I, I kind of know the stage story. You know what I mean? It's like here's my stage story. Here's here's where I was before. And you know, what I'd like to know is, and for those of you listening or watching. Yvonne is a extremely high earner in the very, very top echelons inside of network marketing when it comes to income monthly, yearly. And what were you like? How old are you now? 36. 36. Young man, 20 years younger than me. My gosh, that's depressing. <laughs> um, so 36 years old. What were you like as a kid? I mean, you know, if somebody were describing you as a seven-year-old uh, looking at you, how would they describe you? What would, what would they seven say? Seven-year-old. Oh, man. I would probably be a little kid who would do their own thing. I would love to play sports. I was a big sports guy, baseball, um, video games. Um, you know, I, I would what actually... What was your video game when you were growing up? Oh, my God. Any video game. Any I know, sport. but you had to have a favorite, didn't you? Oh, well... I used just to play Nintendo, just Donkey Kong. I remember right now, sports, anything involved with sports. Yeah. Where, where, and where, did, where were you born? Tijuana, Mexico, originally. Tijuana. And, and that's where you grew up until how long? I grew up in Tijuana until I was like 18. Okay. 18 years old. All right. So you, you, you grew up there. What, what did your parents do? Well, my mom, she's actually a nurse in profession. She actually got retired when she was 20 years in the profession because she developed a weird uh, system nervous disease mm -hmm. that she couldn't just barely walk. And then my dad, he, uh, he used to work for this uh, uh, drugstore for mm -hmm. like 30 years for a public hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. Okay. So you, you watch your mom and dad, hardworking people. Very hardworking people, both of them. Yeah. Uh, my mom actually started doing entrepreneurship through network marketing. Really? Yes. Wow. She actually has a photo of her and Jim Rohn. Uh, Get out of here. So back in the Herbalife days? Yeah, back in the Herbalife days. Yes. Oh my goodness. So when I was 13 years of age, she used to gra grab me and take me to those Herbalife meetings. I used to. So you got a little uh, exposed to it. Did she ever make any money with it? She made around $1,000 per month. That's big. That was big. She was huge uh, for Tijuana. Right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for there. She made it. And then, but she was up in it. And she was always one of those entrepreneurship mothers, always trying to help the family, bring food to the family. Mm. She was just amazing. You have brothers and sisters? I actually have two brothers and six sisters. Check wow. that out. <laughs> I'm the youngest one. Of You're the youngest. Them. I'm the youngest of so all what, of them. So what, what's it like to be the youngest of, of that whole crew? Well, I'm eight years younger than the oldest one. So I'm, I was just a pampered one. Were they one. like double uh, uh, twins and triplets or something? No. Well, you have to give you an or idea. Was it a blended family? It was, it's, it's like a blended family. I got okay. step Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got my, it. My, my dad right now, he's like 84, for example. Mm. My mom is like 72, you know, so... So with their older, I was like the last drop. <laughs> so at, at, so at, at some point, did, did your mom and dad get divorced? No, no. They're actually the last couple. They're okay. actually the last couple I together. understand. Mm -hmm. So there was previous. Yes, there was previous marriages of my dad, previous marriage of my mom. Okay. When they came together, so they're the only mom and dad you've ever had. And I am their only son of them. Really? Yes. So the rest were kind of combined from other things. And you're the like the, the glue that holds everybody together? Exactly. <laughs> so what was it like being... I'm, I'm the oldest. Okay. Okay. So I don't know what it's like to be the youngest. For 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 my youngest brother, okay, he's like everybody was my parents were really strict with me because I was the oldest and they didn't know any better. They're very, very, very strict. By the time my youngest brother was born, 10 years later, they were exhausted. And he basically did whatever he wanted and 
you know, they were just like, ah, whatever. Everything's kind of cool. Uh, what was it like for you being youngest? I don't think they could, you could say that I could do the anything, but I could, I was definitely pampered. I was definitely the kid that, hey, I want You were kind of like an only child inside of a big family. Yeah, so I was like, basically, hey, I want this video game, and I would like maybe cry about it, and they will give it to me, right? That was, but, but they would ask for me for good grades. That was the only thing that my mom always asked for me. You need to have good grades. You need to be the top of the class. And uh, did you? Oh, yes. Uh, when I was a little kid, I was top of the class. Used to get and in Mexico that's nine and ten, which is like A and A pluses. I was uh, number one, number two of every every class until maybe I was in high school. Really? Yes. So, um, so you go through school mm -hmm. and good student. Good student. <laughs> I was not a good student growing up. Um, so let people know, uh, you know, at home that whether you're a good student or not a good student, you can be successful inside yes. of this profession. But your parents kind of said, this is important. This is something that we want as a priority. You can get to have some cool things so long as you pay attention to this, this, uh, this discipline yes. of getting good grades. And they, they wanted you to have a better life, I'm, su I'm sure. Yeah, they wanted me to have, have a better life. My mom wanted me for, to be a doctor. Mm. My, my dad just wanted me to be a professional. Uh, so I, that's, that's what I was going for, to be honest. The, so, so when you get out of high school, did you go to like medical school or something? No, I, I hated blood. I couldn't ah, handle blood. I can't either. So I was like, I'm, I cannot do doctor. I love baseball. And I was a really good baseball player. What position did you play? Uh, Major League pitcher. When I was really? Six, yeah. When How I was, many pitches did you have? A uh, four. Okay. When I was 16 years of age, I was throwing 91 miles per hour, which wow. back in Mexico was huge. It is huge, no and, matter where it is in the world. And, 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 and I was doing great, 18, I was, I was being highly prospected, but then I hurt my shoulder. Ah. It was a big shoulder injury. Probably the best thing that ever happened to you. It's probably the best thing that ever happened to me for the first three years after the injury. I never thought that was the best thing that ever happened right. to me. Super I, depressed. It was super depressed. I was, I was not the best uh, kid. I used to go out, you know, in, in, in the U.S., you can go out until you're 21. Well, in Mexico, when you're 18, you can go out. And I used to be a bad, bad son, to be honest. I used to come in when the sun was coming out. That's when I was coming in for the parties. That, really? that was me uh, drinking, partying, doing stupid stuff until I was like 21 or so. And you're like, thought my life is over since I can't pitch. Screw this. I'm just going to go. I'm just gonna do have fun. Have fun. My fa my my parents used to say, "Just go to school." And I was like, "What's the one profession I'm kind of like okay at?" And I used to say, "Engineering," because I'm good at numbers. So I studied civil engineering. So okay. So when when did you stop partying so hard and switch to the civil engineering path? Well, I was still studying civil engineering. To be honest, I was still partying. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and, you're a young guy. Yeah, I was. And and, and, and then but, this is at, at what age did you start? Uh, civil engineering was like around uh, after I got hurt, 18, 19. I started focusing into that path. Okay. Uh, but I was still not leaving baseball behind uh, because I knew I was trying not to rehab the trying shoulders. to rehab, trying to do the whole thing. Um, I knew I was not going to be like an MLB player, but I knew I could still play some good ball. Uh, I actually played Division II baseball in Cal State LA, which is Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we actually went to College World Series. We, we, we lost in the semifinals. So I kind of got, got a little bit of the dream, mm -hmm. you know. And then I graduated as a civil engineer. Uh, I, got, I, went, I went back to San Diego State to finish my last semester. And I was making around $50,000 a year mm -hmm. in my first job as an engineer. Prior to becoming an engineer. You don't strike me as an engineer type. I, I don't. <laughs> I was an engineer. Did your mind think that way? Oh, yes, yes. Even, I was, even in your network marketing business, do you think structurally like like an engineer? I actually build as an engineer. Really? Yeah, when I so structure... So you're, you're architecting oh, yes. your team. Oh, when I, when I do action plans and everything, I structure as an engineer because I'm talking about foundation of your business. Very I'm, strategic. Yes, very strategic. I'm huh. a very hardworking guy, disciplined, but I'm very strategic. Interesting. Definitely. Interesting. Yes. All right. So, so you go, you, you come out of school and you get a job. I got a job. And, 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 and so, where was the job? Chula Vista, California. Okay. That was my first structural engineering job. 
And and what were your parents thinking of of you and your life path at this at this point in time? Right there, they were happy because they were just they had me lost for like three years, you know, and I was in and out of jobs. I was to be working at La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club as a bellman or security guy or the GNC department, or I used to be working at the home uh, at the Home Depot in the paint department. So I was in and out in all these kind of jobs. And then now I'm in a civil engineer. I just got married with my wife, you know, so they're 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 happy. They're like, look at Yvonne, he has a job, he has a wife, and then we just got a house. Uh, so that we, we got a house for like two months. I remember we did a down payment. So late 2008, we're like coming over, like we're excited and all that happens. And then recession hit. Recession hit. This is like 2008, 2009. 2008, I still remember the date. It was December 12, 2008. My former boss comes to my office and says, we need to talk. Uh -oh. And I'm like, uh-oh, right? <laughs> and like, it's like, we're going to have to let you go. And there's no more job. And I appreciate everything you've done. Maybe we'll keep you hired as a part-time whenever we need you. But there's no more job. I, rem I remember I was, I was crying mm. because... Uh, we just had uh, done the first payment of the home, and I we just had a one our first year anniversary wedding party with my wife mm. three days after that I had paid already for everything, so I was in my part in the parking lot of the office crying for like two hours. What am I going to go back home saying to my wife? Right. And and the worst of it still happened. I was crying. I didn't know what to do. And my boss comes down and knocks on my window. And and I'm like, why are you knocking at my window? Leave me dude? alone. You just fired me, yeah, right? Yeah, go and away. I'm, and I'm like doing this, like, what's going on? His name is Luis. Right? I'm like, what's going on, Luis? It's like anything, anything okay? I'm like, you you just let me go, man. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. He's like, well, I, we we told you we can call you back, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> All right. So now I'm like, I gotta go from here. Is there a problem? Yeah. I just fired you. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just threw a bomb in the middle of your life. <laughs> Again, one of the best things that probably ever happened to you. It, it is the best thing. Imagine that if they gave you a raise. No, I would what, still be there probably. Yeah, what, what if they what if they promoted you to CEO of the company? Right. I, I'm so happy that that happened to me. Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of people don't know this, but I I got I got two offers as an engineer. One for that small company. One for a big company. Thank God I took the one for the small company because the big company was still probably I was probably be hired there. Yeah, yeah. And the small company, I have no money for you. I went home. I told my wife. What'd she say? She was devastated, but then she was like, like a good backup. While a lot, she she always in my back. She's like, "Don't worry, we're gonna get out of this one." And I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, "The party, let's have the party." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, let's have the one year anniversary party." But also, it played that. Oh, it's December, January. I'm gonna get a job like this. I'm not even worried. Then January hit, of course, no job, no interviews. And uh, a good friend of mine that uh, used to work as an, as an architect for that engineering firm, he said, hey, man, uh, I, I got this opportunity for you. And uh, this is amazing because like two weeks after, before I got fired, he got into a Friday into, into the engineering office and with, with two bottles of juices, okay? Right. And, and he gets in and I'm like, are you guys drinking, right? I'm like thinking right. about that. He's like, no, I'm going to share an opportunity to your bosses. And I'm like, an opportunity? Wine? And I'm like, okay, I'll, can I come in? It's like, yeah, come over. And I sit down and he's pouring those juices to my bosses and I'm listening to it. I'm like, this is MLM, right? Yeah. He's like, you invite two, they invite two, they invite two. And I'm like, my mom does that, right? right? And then my bosses are like laughing at him. And I'm like asking him, how much are you making? And he, and he told me 10,000 a month. I'm like, you're making 10,000 a month doing that? Oh, give me, who drinks the juices? I remember it was the Boston Red Sox used to drink the juices. So I'm like, oh, Red Sox, baseball? Oh, I need one of those. But I never got interested. But after I got fired, the guy calls me up. It's like, hey man, I, I, I want to invite you to an opportunity. He followed up. And I, yeah, he followed up. That was a great point right there. And, and, and another point Most that, people just give up, walk away, and they never call again. Yes. And they don't know that somebody just lost their job. That's one. They don't know that the situation changed. That's one. And the other one is, if you think about it, I self-invited myself. Yeah. Because the guy was going to introduce it to my bosses, and yeah. I was the guy who was interested. Yeah. So two things interesting happened there. And uh, I go to the meeting. Um, I remember I was really skeptical. 
because I never Is this at a hotel or something. It was at an hotel at the Hilton, Double Tree Hilton, Mission Valley, California. I still remember it. He picked <laughs> me up because I I I didn't have sure. any money for the gas. I go into the meeting and they they introduce Calvin. They introduce Calvin. I wow. so they got Calvin in there. He's doing the business opportunity, and they're saying at the end, oh, this guy makes a hundred k a year and a hundred k a month. Sorry, and I'm like, what? Hundred k a month? That's impossible, right? Yeah, prove but it, I, right? Prove it. But I, but, but I'm, thank God I'm a very uh, logical guy. I'm not a very emotional guy on that end. I'm I'm pretty emotional, but on making decisions, very logical. Engineering. Yes, engineering. So I got out and I saw Calvin's car, some Mercedes black AMG 2009. I'm looking at it. I'm like, hey man, how much was your car? It's like over a hundred thousand. And then I had a Toyota Rav4 2003. That Toyota 4003, I was paying like $450 a month. And I'm like, oh, I just imagined those payments in that AMG, man. And he's like, payments? It was one payment, bro. I'm like, one payment? What, with that juicing? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, can I do that? It's like, anybody can do it. If I can do it. And I was like, really? So that, that simple thing right there got me thinking, I can do this. Mm. Then something really good my friend did. Because I asked him, where can I see this? He's like, oh, I'm going to do, be doing a meeting at my home uh, next week. I'm like, where's that? Corona, California. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's like an hour away. I, I got no way to get there. My friend tells me, I'll take you. I'm like, hell yeah. So that was really good for my friend. I get there. I remember I see a white BMW now, not only the Mercedes. And then Calvin comes in with his shorts. And I'm like, whose car is this? It's like mine. I'm like, you got two, right? Because in my culture, you don't have two nice cars. You have one and you owe it. So yeah. now this guy has two paid cars. He has a nice home. That gets me really fired up. Yeah. I get back to my family and in and, 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 and the house because we just left the home. We were back living with my parents, mm. you know, and, and, and I have that feel like? a horrible feeling, right? But, but they don't know that I just signed up into this opportunity with over $1,000. Here's the funny thing how I signed up. A lot of people don't know this. But there was three <laughs> packages. One was $200, one was $500, and one was over $1,000. I had over $70,000 in debt. I had a credit card, of course. And they were like, come in. The biggest pack is going to give you X and Y, Z percentage off. And I'm like with a little bit of ego, yeah, 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 try out the big pack. But inside myself, I'm like, that card has like $300. There's like no way that's going to go through. And then they, oh, they say, okay, there you go. Welcome to the opportunity. I'm like, welcome. Oh, shit. Now it I'm in went trouble. Through. Yeah, it went through. Dang it, it went through. <laughs> so now I'm with like 50 bottles of juices, you know, going back to my house. And my dad said, Oh my God, all those years studying, all those years of even, school. Even with your mom's experience, are you still skeptical? Well, now my, well, yeah, because they only made $1,000, right? Ah, so he's, that's a part-time thing. That's a part-time thing. That's something thing. for the little woman that's to do. That's for a little it's woman. It's not for a career. You're an engineer. Yeah, what are yeah, you, doing? you have a profession. And then my mom was a little bit hurt because like, why are you not doing the my why aren't opportunity? Why you joining my company? <laughs> why, <laughs> I have you 10 years in buying yeah, you. Thanks a lot. Yes. You, after all, I gave you life I gave. and you wouldn't give me a, a look at my business. I am your oh mom. You know, you sign up with a stranger and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my and my wife she was very supportive but she was like go ahead and do it uh, because she was still very hurt do something yeah. yeah do something get an extra so that started our neural marketing story basically that's uh, 11 years ago that was uh, 2009 2009, 2009. so um, tell me about your first 90 days <laughs> my first 90 days so I remember Listening a lot to Jim Rome, mm -hmm. right? And and a lot to Jim Rome and lo the, the, the law of probability. And even if you hit three, 300, you're great. And mm -hmm. even if you hit 200, and he used to say, if, if, if out of a hundred, if, if you have one person that does 10 meetings and nine signs up, he will say, I would beat him because I would do a hundred and 10 would sign up. Mm. So in my mind, I was like, maybe if I'm that bad, Right. I'm still going to win because I'm going to talk to a lot of people. So I remember talking to 
so many people that I signed up over 40 in the first three months. Really? So how many people do you think you talked to in those first three months? I'm guessing minimum 400 to 500 what, people. Where did you know these people from? Well, what happened is uh, I remember listening to team sales audios. Okay. Uh, to, it was his cassettes, putting him in and even like just understanding how to go to the street and say, Hey, hello, hi, how are you? And me day by day understanding what was the next word I was going to say and what was wow. the next word I was going so to say. So you're willing to just walk and talk. I was walking and talking in Bonita, Man, California. I'm, a, I'm an introverted person. That scares me to death. It, I, to I was very scared. I was so scared. But you were hungry. I was so hungry. I was so in debt. They were calling me from Toyota. They were calling me from FAFSA. Uh, I, was, I think it was FAFSA, right? The school education for me to do the payments. I was so scared of anything. So I would, I, I would have a little eye glue, uh, little backpack, yeah. ice backpack to put the juices and, and go out to people and, <laughs> and have them try the product. I just wanted you to try the product and tell me what it feels. And, and they used to tell me it is four ounces, Yvonne. I used to give him one ounce, yeah. you know, well, I don't I'm have not, that much money, that right? Much, yeah. One ounce, try it out. And that was me every time, number and calling them up and then giving them the presentation. For the first 90 days, I used to not give the presentation. I remember I had a huge Toshiba, put it on the cable. You got to put the cable because the green is the, the, the screen is green. So you got to pull up the cable so it looks okay. And I put a plate on the video of my sponsor and, the, and my sponsor was doing the presentation. I, I signed that like 40. Um, so you, you, you personally signed up like 40 people just out of being purely hungry. Yes. And um, did any of those people recruit anybody? No, that was my that was my big thing. I was I was good so at recruiting. Didn't have any duplication. I was horrible at duplication. Uh, I think my biggest check so for as soon, like, as soon as you start, somebody somebody else quits and you keep going. Keep that going, was keep it. Going. And then and then I remember uh, I was so hungry that the little money I was making. So how much um, did you earn in those first ninety days? I, I think total of like eight hundred to a thousand dollars. That's it. Total. Total. Um, so they were signing out with the most smallest packs. The smallest packages. You're getting some. You're getting movement, but not progress. Exactly. Uh, so, so I had the same thing. Uh, you know, I could sign people up, but they weren't doing anything. I'd yell at them. I'd say, okay, I, I gotta, I gotta sign up. You know, more serious people. I gotta. I tried all these different approaches, and I couldn't figure out duplication. It was so frustrating because. You hear these stories yes. from your upline and stuff. And, you know, these people like, I have 800,000 people on my team. And it's like, well, screw you. I've got 30 and I don't like any of them. You know, totally. it's just like depressed looking at my own team. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, they're like the walking dead. I know looking exactly. At you. you know what I mean? <laughs> so when did you have your first breakthrough where this turned into something that you thought that could be a real thing? Oh my God. Well, I'm, I'm so grateful. I always have sponsors. They always used to tell me, come to events, come to events. Mm. And I always used to be the negative person. Why, why, why? But I will still go. And if sometimes I would miss, they will call me, go, go. So I'm, I'm so grateful. I had those kind of uh, mentors or sponsors mm -hmm. uh, calling me up. And I, I remember two incidents. This is the, the first one kind of like got me into MLM. And I said, this is, this is where I know I'm going to do it. I remember recession was hitting so hard 2010 and I went to an event like 2000 people event or so. And then a lady, uh, a couple, they were making like, like 300, 400,000 a month. And they given this brick cases of, uh, I think it was like the quarter or of, of a million each. And they, and they, the company gave these out. The lady opened it up and she starts yelling, what recession? What recession? I got so pumped after that. I was saying also to myself, what recession? You know, I'm so pumped up. And I said, I'm never going to leave this industry. That mm. This is the industry I'm going to do it. A lot of things happen, but I was still not growing. It was an event, the, the event that changed my life. You know, there's all, every event has changed my life. Yeah. But the event that really made me understand what I was missing, I still remember it was July 23rd, 2011. It was in Pasadena, California. It was around 1,500 people also in the event. I was very mad in that event. I was very pissed off. And the reason I was pissed off, I remember uh, the event was $20. So I was still bringing five of my teams from Tijuana, Mexico. And my, my sponsor from then, he told me, these were his words. Don't worry about it. I got it. 
So in my mind, he says, don't worry about it. I got it. I'm thinking, oh, he has my tickets and he has the tickets of my people, right? So I got there. I'm like, bro, I'm here. I'm like, yeah, come in. I'm like, yeah, but you told me you got it. And he's like, yeah. I said, when you come here, I got it. And I'm like, oh, you, you see what I'm saying? He was not going to pay for the tickets. Now I got to pay for the tickets. I ha I still, I just got a job like six months before. So I was unemployed for almost two years. So my debt is $70,000 now. Uh, uh, my parents are still taking us there in, right? And what happened is in that event, uh, ex happened exactly what you were saying right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, one of our uplines there, he's like, you want to you wanna see yourself why you're not growing? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, and he said a name, right? Alberto, come over here. Alberto's been, been in our company for three months. Alberto, please tell everybody how much you're making. And they put it on the mic. Alberto's 20000 a month. And I'm inside myself like, like you, you see, I was like, right. you, you, so what frustrating. the hell's going on here? And then he doesn't stop there. He's like, Raul, come over here. Like, here's your mic. You've been in the company how long? Two months. How much are you making this month? 15,000. I'm like, oh, you, Jesus. What's the matter with me? I'm not even making a thousand, right? right. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? There's something missing here. So he, a couple of things there happened. One of them that I thought I was being teachable and coachable, I wasn't. I was not being 100% teachable and coachable. Anything I questioned it, anything I wanted to find a little shortcut, anything they said, buy this many books, for example, I would say, I'm going to buy half, I'm going to copy print them the rest, or I'm going to grab it, I'm going to say the summary to my people, not bring people to the events. That's a small example. And, and then the other one, they were about writing your goals, repeating your goals, the six steps of how do you turn all your desires into gold and write them out. And I used to be the person like, write them out? I have them here. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to write them out? Make no sense. And then repeat your goals. I'm not going to repeat. I know my goals. Tell me exactly what I do. So after that event, after that, I saw the Raul and Alberto example, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start doing get humble exactly what they tell me. I'm going to start being humble. I'm going to stop thinking that I know it all because I'm looking at my wallet. I'm looking at my bank account. I know nothing. See, being hungry is not necessarily enough. Yes. You got to be hungry and coachable. Yes. Because you can be hungry and go down the wrong road. Totally. Yeah, even fast down the wrong road. Yes. Yeah. And so, so you got humble and you decided, okay, you're going to become super coachable. Mm -hmm. Anything else happened to, to, to help you have a breakthrough? Well, that's one of the biggest things that helped me getting a big breakthrough. Um, How long did it take after that breakthrough to before it started to work? Well, my my level, my action was always there. I'm, I was always a guy that would just go to the streets. Uh, I didn't care talking to people. I used to prospect for me. It was five to 10 people every day on the streets. Mm. Back then it was still 2010, 2011. So still Instagram didn't exist. Uh, you know, YouTube was not a big thing. Facebook was not something that we actually used for it still. So I, I used to go on the street. So for me it was going to Panera Bread or McDonald's Cafe or whatever it is to talking to people, even to Bonita, California, just going to, to, to doors and knocking on them. It was, wow. it was that, that I was so hungry. So the action was not the problem. Um, but what happened to me back then is I understood that it was not about the people I was getting in. It's about they, I didn't know my why. And because I didn't know my why, I didn't know how to get people to tell me their why and to go after their why. One phrase that helped me change my whole thing is they said, um, if you want to be a millionaire, help, uh, uh, help basically a uh, thousand people make a hundred dollars residually. That changed my, my whole perspective because I was making like 500, $600 residually. So I said, I can help people make a hundred dollars residually. That can be easy for me. I thought that I could be obtainable. Okay. So after that, I started focusing everybody who signed up hey, our first goal, a hundred dollars. And then second goal, $500 and third goal, a thousand dollars. What happened is I started doing launches with people. I was not launching them. I was just signing them up and I was looking on the next sign up instead of looking on the next launch in debt, you know? Yep. So that changed the whole game.
game for me. I never stopped prospecting. I just added the duplication part. And it was, it went from, I, I went from that event, July 23rd, making like 500, September, I still remember the day, September making like 1,000. And then two months later, 3,000. Two months later, 6,000. Three months later, 20,000. Three months later, 50,000. And it took off. By July 2013, it was 100,000 per month. Hmm. Hmm. And it was all because I learned how to work in depth. Yes. So the, the ability, and I think I really like the distinction between recruiting someone and launching someone. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that there's a big difference. And then teaching the, helping them launch some people until they become equipped to do it themselves. Exactly. Launching people, launching people, launching people, launching people, completely different discipline. Yes. Than just enrolling people. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward to today, you live this crazy life. Um, your family, you, you have kids? We got two daughters, yeah, 10 year old they? and two, and two year old. Yeah. That's a big gap. It's a big gap. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have a huge team around the world. What do you think is your, what makes you so special now? I mean, you figured out how to recruit, you figured out how to launch, you figured out duplication, uh, but you're in the very rare top percentile of earners in the world. What do you think? There's other people who joined when you joined, didn't get where you are. Other people got to a certain level and stopped. Other people got to a higher level and stopped. Mm -hmm. And you're still going mm -hmm. uh, when other people would have retired a long time ago. Yes. What makes you so special, do you think? Well, I don't really consider myself a... I know, I know, but you are. <laughs> you are. You are special. But but one of the things I, I definitely happened back in 2000. 13 when I earned my first million because that was my whole that was not the reason but one of my things was I ain't either gonna die a millionaire or I'm gonna die trying right so it's like okay I'm a millionaire so now what mm -hmm. right so that whole focus it was about who's the next one who's the next person and I we started traveling around the world and cities about who's going to become that next financial freedom person the next millionaire in their family etc but to be honest um, that only can hit could, could last so long for me. So it was actually around 2016 where I actually was in a seminar, uh, actually with Tony Robbins. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm a big believer in mentorship. I'm a big believer in always, uh, getting yourself involved with people who have bigger results, bigger expectations of life than yourself. Because I think that was one of the biggest challenges in life that people are okay, but they forget about going for the best. And not only for the best of you, but for the best of everybody. I love how Jim Rohn used to say it. At the beginning, you do it for you yeah. and then for your family. But then you add to ask yourself, do you want to include more people into your family, like a, like a city or like a state or like a country or like internationally? And, and that was huge for me in 2016 because Tony talks a lot about the law of contribution and the law of growth. And when he's talking a lot of law of contribution, law of growth, that was like... That's what I needed because uh, for me, network marketing, it is the best industry ever created. But at the same time, I'm like, what else can we do besides network marketing? And not only be considered because in, in, in Latin America, they see myself and they see, oh, network marketer. I'm like, yeah, but you don't even know what network marketing is. You got no idea. So I'm like, what if we start training our network marketer leaders amazing leaders also as business people also as investors and also people can actually have a amazing passive income not only in network marketing but two to three or four times more in different areas so that got me into thinking of okay if if i need to do that that means i need to grow in other aspects in life i don't know real estate i need to learn real estate i don't know trading i need to learn trading i don't know mutual funds i need to know mutual funds I don't know technology. I need to know technology, whatever it is. So for me, it was about growing in different areas because if I'm going to have amazing leaders in my organization, making say five, six, seven, eight figures, whatever it is, I'm going to have to teach them also how to become that next level. And uh, one of my things, for example, that I have is impact the life of 1 billion people. 
That's what I say to myself, impact the life of 1 billion people. And what that means, uh, people say, well, I want 1 billion in network marketing. I'm like, that could be 1 billion in network marketing, but but we can also do it in uh, in donations. We can do it, also do it in, in, in have actually jobs for other people. We can also do more than just having jobs. Maybe you have uh, 10,000 or 100,000 units in rent like we, so we can help in, in household for people. So it can be so many stuff. And in order for me to become that, I need to become better financially. I need to become better emotionally. I need to become better spiritually. I need to become better physically. I need to become better personal development wise. Hmm. So that's been my focus since 2016. You know, I love that. So, so, um, there is d different chapters. One is just oh, yes. <laughs> survival. Yes. And then there's success. Yes. Right. Then there's significance, which is helping other people. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much, I mean, you'll do anything to survive. Um, and uh, some people will do certain things to succeed. But when you, when you kind of focus on, when, once you get your own financial needs taken care of, and you can focus on other people, there's a joy in that mm -hmm. and a sense of purpose and fulfillment in that that's really hard to describe. Mm -hmm. It's like a calling. It's like a mission. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like what you're put on this earth to do, not just to survive and pay bills, exactly, but to empower people. You know, exactly. when you see somebody's eyes light up and they believe for the first time exactly. that they can actually do something, yes. it's pretty cool. Um, all right. Well, this has been a great conversation. I want to go through um, rapid fire. Okay? okay. Some quick questions. Okay. <laughs> you don't even know these questions I'm going to ask you. What's your favorite thing about network marketing? People. The people. Uh, the people. Uh, when I, when I get a brand new person and I can get him to believe that he can do it, that for me is the best feeling ever. And, and to be honest, I, I talk to a brand new person and I can take him from, him, from him. I, I, small example, six, 60 year old man. I was telling him about the opportunity, just network marketing in general meeting is over. He approaches me crying and saying, Yvonne, thank you so much. You just opened my, my mind that I had it closed for 40 years in my life. Mm. So people like I cannot, what I did for him in 45 minutes speech, he hadn't had it in 40 years. So that was a big change for me. Love that. Yeah. What, be honest, what is your least favorite thing about network marketing? What's something that's annoying? What is something that is annoying? Okay. Uh, people who, people who not people, who, people who hate network marketing, <laughs> right? Because the, the haters, the haters, but not, not, not the hater that is going to be like, like, Hey, you, network marketing sucks. No, no. The, the hater that is going to try to make it to the news. The hater is going to try to put some very negative Unfair. drama. You see what I'm saying? That taking that, shots, yeah, cheap shots, cheap shots, stuff like that. You don't even know. Yeah. Or taking shots of, about personal shots about the leaders. Yeah. And it was like, you don't even know me. That's the, the annoying part. I, I don't, I don't, I don't sleep on it, but it's just a little bit annoying. Got it. Um, over the course of these last 10, 11 years, what are you most proud of? Honestly, the amount of people, thank God I can say they have been impacted thanks to the decision we made. Because mm. I know if we would have said no 11 years ago, or at one point of those 11 years ago, a lot of people would not be in the position that we are. So I'm very proud of being saying yes, but more proud about them having the opportunity, having the results that they have. I'm very proud about that. If, if you didn't find network marketing, what do you think you'd be doing today? Oh my God, I'm being an employee somewhere else. <laughs> really? And the only thing I believe that is because I don't know. Uh, I, I've never seen anything that inspired me and, and really fires me up like network marketing. Hmm. And I, my dreams were done when I was a baseball player. Yeah. So maybe an engineer. Wow. Um, are you a reader? Are you a book person? Yes. yes, yes. So, so give me a, a couple books that have impacted your career. The, the f several books I read before this one, but the one book that opened the mind... Of, of me forever was a study book from Bob Proctor that is called the the success puzzle. The uh, success puzzle. The success puzzle. by Bob Proctor. By Bob Proctor. That book right there opened my mind to the next level. 
um, the first leadership group that helped me grow was the 21 Irrefutable Laws from John C. Maxwell. But if there's one favorite leadership group, a book for me, it is the five levels of leadership from John C. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite books of the mindset is uh, th this, uh, I know in Spanish, so it's The Millionaire, the, the millionaire Secrets, Secrets of the Millionaire Secrets Mind. of the Millionaire T. Mind. T. Hecker. T. Hecker. Yeah. That was a, another favorite book of mine. And um, the, the one book that also, of course, I teach about a lot, it is Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, yeah. So um, a lot of people out there, I mean, your story is great. It's amazing. And um, I hope it inspires people like it inspires me, you know, just to hear the story. Because, you know, look, I, I've been doing this for 32 years. Uh, I've been around this profession for 32 years. And um, you've had a lot higher level field success than I ever did. Uh, it's really cool to be able to see uh, the, the generation that's coming up and breaking records, you know, doing outstanding, extraordinary things and, and helping people around the world. Um, what advice for people out there that are, they're either looking at network marketing, they're not sure, or they're involved and they're struggling. They haven't had a breakthrough yet. You know, they haven't, they don't have financial independence, um, but they want it. They're hungry. What advice do you have for them? Well, the things that I always tell people is number one, have that mentor, have that person that you really, really, really feel admired by. You know, you you like you love his lifestyle, you love his principles, you love how he is or how she is. Is is you got you need to have that mentor. N number two, the develop definitely focus on developing a belief level. The, definitely belief is is a science for me. You know, is is I learned that I can learn how to believe, and that was so huge for me. Uh, I, I didn't know that 11 years ago. I didn't know that you can learn how to believe. I didn't know you can change your paradigms. I didn't know you can change your belief levels. So that's another one that is very huge, the belief. Uh, number three, have a huge imagination. Imagination, you know, it's, it's a lot of people will tell you, don't imagine, don't, don't think about the Mercedes, don't think about the Audis, don't think about the money. Money is going to transform you. And for example, just sitting down with you right now, you were talking about the airplanes, you were talking about, you know, the two airplanes, not just yeah, one yeah, airplane. Yeah. I mean, if uh, that would conversation would have never given me a bigger imagination if I would have never come to your home, for example. So I made a decision to come here. So another thing that can help a lot of people is sometimes you're going to have to invest time and money to go and visit your mentors, to go and visit your coaches, the people who are going to give you a bigger imagination so that's another one then the another one is teachable and coachable and when i mean teachable and coachable is a hundred percent some people want to say well i like that but i wouldn't i wouldn't do that and that's when it starts just taking time of your success and you want success fast and i, I think that's one of the most biggest ones that i would tell people teachable and coachable belief level and the one thing that I always say to my leaders is leadership, because you're always, your group is only going to be as huge, as big as your weakest link. So make sure you're not the weakest link. Yeah. Be as stronger as a leader. Keep developing yourself. Yes. Yvonne, um, thank you for the conversation and thank you for your contribution to the profession. I know you're just warming up. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know the next chapter for you is going to be extraordinary. And I know the, the amount of people that you're impacting and the leaders that you're impacting are going to be breaking records uh, for a long time to come. Appreciate it very much. And the one, the, I can tell you the one phrase that always inspires me and takes me to the next level since a long time ago, I always tell people, time promotes you or exposes you. So make sure it promotes you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yvonne Tapia, everybody. Um, hope you got value. Appreciate you tuning in and uh, learning from it. If you got value, make sure you share this with somebody that can uh, learn something from it. And we'll see you next time. Take care.